Dick Cable, Jennifer Smith, Harry Stockman with the weather, and HealthCast with Gail Westbrook. This is News 10 at 5. If you love trains, California history, and fun for the whole family, Old Sacramento is where you want to be for the next 10 days. Thank you for joining us for this special edition of News 10 at 5. For the next 10 days, an estimated 300,000 people will be packing into Old Sacramento to join in celebrating California's Rail Fair 91 and the 10th anniversary of the Railroad Museum. Among the first to the party is our own Dick Cable, who is live in Old Sac for our special coverage of the Rail Fair. Dick? On oh, the band just started playing here, Jennifer. This is quite spectacular. Uh, this is indeed a gathering moment in American history, and it's a thrill to be a part of it. I'm uh, live in Old Sacramento, of course, overlooking the venue for Rail Fair 91. This is the spot where um, a quarter of a million, 300,000 people or so are expected over the next 10 days to soak up some of the magic of the Iron Road the history of railroading and boy is it all here the largest rail fair of its kind in a half a century dozens of classic old steam engines right here in old sacramento it's all part of a 10th anniversary celebration for the sacramento railroad museum and a fundraiser for a new museum to be built the official opening came late this morning and as news 10's george warren tells us the events have been non-stop ever since the rail fair only comes once every 10 years. So at the opening ceremony, Sacramento Mayor Ann Rudin didn't want to miss her chance to reach an international audience. And I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you'll come back again. We should do this more often than every 10 years. There is something special about trains. You either love them or you don't. Not much room in between. But it's more than just the sights and the sounds, it's also the smell, the steam and the burning coal, oil and even wood. Anywhere else this would be smog, but here it's just smoke from an old train. And the names, names like Climax or simply 2472. Well, I fired for Southern Pacific in the, in the twilight of steam in the 50s. So I, I had fired this engine before on the San Jose commute system where, where she finished her tour of duty. They took her out of service in 56. At that time, I had no idea I'd ever be involved in the restoration of a 2400. <laughs> but she's a grand old girl, and we're just proud of her. And you'll see lots of kids out here, of all ages. Oh, it's fabulous. Greatest event possibly in railroading history. Something you've got to remember here at Rail Fair is that these locomotives, by definition, move. So while you're busy looking at the trains, don't forget to watch the trains. And for the next 10 days, you can get a feel for what America was like in simpler times. In Old Sacramento, George Warren, News 10. Well, Rail Fair really is about two things, the trains, of course, and also the people who love them. Right now, we're going to join Dan Adams, who is live aboard the Sacramento Southern Excursion Train, making its way down the river right now. Dan, what are you experiencing? Well, Dick, i got to tell you, this is modern technology aboard an old workhorse. In fact, this is how we're getting the signal back. We microwave it up to the helicopter, then back down to the station and out to your TV sets at home. So if we go under a tree or go under a bridge, you might lose, lose us for a second. We'll be back, though. An incredible voyage we're on right now. You can see over on the left side of your screen is Interstate 5 which probably you may have seen this train while you're driving home at times. And over here on the right of your screen is the Sacramento River. Now this train has been here in Sacramento since 1984 and has carried virtually, oh, about a third of a million passengers, if you can believe that. It was built back in 1920 and it was used in a switchyard, mainly back in Wyoming and Nebraska. It was back in 1962, it was kind of idle there for a few years. But after that, since then, it's been carrying a lot of passengers here in Sacramento. Now let's go on inside, but before we do, what do you think about this? Oh, it's the greatest. It's just one of the best things in the world. Where are you from? Long Beach, California. You came up for the rail fair. Yes. What have you seen so far today that impresses you? Oh, everything. This is fantastic. You were just, just sitting inside here for a second. I'm going to head on in here now and show the folks. This is what they call the VIP. Well, Dan, uh, a bit of a challenge technologically there to keep the signal going between the train and the helicopter and the station. Uh, we tried our best and we got most of it. Thanks very much. Uh, you might want to keep a pencil and pen handy, piece of paper, because during the newscast, I'll be giving you some 
hints about how to enjoy the next 10 days of Rail Fair 91 here in old Sacramento. Uh, right now, though, let's go back to Jennifer in the studio. All right, Dick, thank you. We'll be taking you on a tour inside what is home for a lot of these trains. Hi, Dick Cable again live in Old Sacramento at Rail Fair 91. Things are beginning to cook down here. Sounds a little bit like the Jazz Festival, too. But there's music down here, and boy, are there trains. Hope you have a pencil and paper handy, because I want to give you a few facts about Rail Fair that'll be helpful to you when you make your visit here. First of all, when you come, you should expect crowds. In fact, uh, they've set up a special parking lot on Front and R Streets, and there is a shuttle that is running back and forth, probably the most convenient thing for you. And rail fare folks are certainly recommending that you try public transit. You can call 321-BUSS, and they'll give you information on how best to get to rail fare from where you are. Now, what it will cost you when you arrive at rail fare, the daily tickets are $12 for adults and $5 for kids. Well, let's look at some of that fabulous equipment that we're talking about. Tom Marshall is standing by now. He's been looking at some of the collection of locomotives and other equipment. Uh, what do you think of what you see, Tom? Quite spectacular, Dick. We're right here amidst all of the steam engines from the little to the very large. Steve, get up on your tiptoes here a little bit and see if you can shoot up over the uh, engines. The one you're looking at right now, that big black dragon looking engine, is the world's largest operating steam engine. It's the Union Pacific's Challenger. It used to haul freight trains across the Rocky Mountains during the 1940s, right in front of it is another Union Pacific engine that came into town last Saturday on the front of that train from Utah. It is simply known as the Union Pacific 844. You'll find the train buffs tend to talk about trains in terms of numbers. It's a more streamlined version of a uh, steam train, and that was a, kind of a concession to diesel engines coming in at the time. This is just three of the 30 or so engines that are on display down here, and I uh, recommend everybody get here early and allow a lot of time to get on these engines, Dick. Uh, they are spectacular. Well, I mentioned to you that Rail Fair 91 is a celebration of the 10th anniversary of the California State Railroad Museum here in Old Sacramento. Perhaps if you're new in town or just haven't taken the trouble yet, you haven't been to the museum. Oh, you really must. And right now, let me take you on a quick tour inside. They come by the thousands to see one of the largest steam engines ever made. One of the giants that pulled cars up the Sierra Nevada. Southern Pacific 4294. To see one of the fanciest ever made, the Empire, which ran between Virginia City and Reno for nearly a century. To walk under Southern Pacific's 1269, a vintage old switching locomotive. Or walk into an old mail car. It's like walking into history. They make up little packages of letters like this. They go on these tables which line the car. But what really gets folks excited, a walk through the St. Hyacinth, a Pullman-type sleeper car, complete with the sounds and the rocking movement of a speeding train. You folks, you often have your dinner in the diner and come back, and by the time you come back, we'll have your beds made up for you and promise you a good night's sleep, all right? That's Alan Sims. He's been a volunteer on this vintage old car since he retired as an English teacher and loves to tell you about his first ride. There was no one on board, and I was so overwhelmed with nostalgia, I got tears in my eyes. I wanted to be seven years old again. But these days, kids have a different view of this classic. One little boy said today, he was trying to figure out what this car was really all about, and he said, oh yeah, it's like a big RV. <laughs> Alan will be telling that story for a long time. By the way, in his four and a half years at the museum, he's fought off the urge to really put this car to use. Oh, yes, on days in this car where there, where there are very few people, if I sit down, I'd fall asleep like that with all the gentle rocking. In fact, if it weren't against regulation, I'd crawl up in one of these berths and be sound asleep in, in just a few minutes. Yeah, rhythm of the rails could put a baby to sleep. But there are plenty of whistles here to get us uh, awake and going. 